Greetings, friends, and welcome to another adventure into the Sawin's book of interesting things. This week, I'm going to be building a haunted radio. It's not going to be, you know, a completely functional radio, like the knobs aren't going to work. But I want to do it with a lighting effect and everything like that. So I'm going to go through and design it, and we'll take it from there. So I hope you enjoyed the journey, and enjoy my haunted radio. Now we're going to be getting into cutting all the wood down for this. This shell is absolute overkill for this, but using EVA foam, I'm finding that it likes to sag, so I'm putting in a really good superstructure underneath this. So what you're gonna need is, as per the template down below, you're gonna need four of these arch pieces. I did these on the bandsaw. They can be done on the jigsaw, but it will be a pretty tough grind, but you can do it. Then you're gonna need four of these, which are the four and a half inches and this is eight inches and now we're going to be going through and starting to assemble these into sets where the goes like this and this and this all comes out of a single two by four that's ripped to one inch wide and when you do this you just want to make sure that like my table saw blade for some reason was off kilter this time I'm going to make sure that everything lines up to the outside and then once we've got this assembled we'll talk about how everything goes here. So I'll be back once I get these frames assembled. Alrighty, we're gonna go assemble this thing as I discussed before. These horizontal ones, make sure that they lie flat. We need to make sure that this part on the front is as open as possible. You wanna nail it together. Wood glue will hold this whole thing together. You're not dealing with a load bearing member here. And you could use finishing nails to, to have to kind of give it some extra strength. I use some brad nails that just gave it that a little bit extra more je ne sais quoi. Now, we're going to be covering this thing in EVA foam. You can cover this in say a masonite or a stone board and use a scroll saw to cut all this out. This is a base. I'm doing this out of EVA foam to kind of leave it as, as accessible as possible. Uh, after I go and cut these huge angles and telling you to use a jigsaw and you, uh, do as I say, not as I do. So. Now using your, this is a 3 8 inch, actually I think this is half inch EVA foam. Just make sure you know what you're doing here. You're gonna set it down, trace around the outside because we need to get that there. Okay, oh, one more thing I'm gonna say is draw an extra line here. If you wanna pedal it, make yourself sound completely crazy. And I'm just gonna draw a line there. Oops. And what that does is it makes sure that you know where this board is. So when you get the template, which is here, you want to make sure that you sit slightly above that. So the foam that we're going to be putting on the inside here has landing on the actual front template, uh, which I didn't do. And I'm telling you to do it now so you don't have to make the same mistake that I did. Now suddenly you look at this and go, what the heck, Simon, where did that come from? Template down below, print out, stick together, cut out, paste on cardboard, do all this, and then you'll have this beautiful template ready to go. You don't have to put it onto the cardboard, but this is a pretty, pretty intricate little design. You don't want to screw around with it too much. And then all you're going to do is you're going to line it up, mark your centers here and up there, put this on at the center, and then just pretty much trace through. Now, up here, there's going to be the video on how to do foam, uh, wood foam texture out of uh, EVA foam. We're going to do the straightforward, oh, magic. Oh, look at that. It's all done. Yay. This is a little bit more in depth than that one up there. Watch that if you don't know how to do this. And then I'm going to just bring you up to speed on this one. So when I put this all down, I traced out the template and I did all the main wood grain, a rough wood grain right off the bat. And that way, so, and then once this is traced through, then I cut all this wood grain with a sharp knife right through even this pattern here. And what it does is it gives you the ability to do really nice sweeping grain and all the grain then matches up and it looks more natural. Then you cut these out and using a Dremel right about here with a sanding drum on it. I just cleaned up these edges. Now, once you've got that part done and you've got the rough wood grain, this is a more complicated wood grain, but let me describe it. 
once you've got it all done you're going to use a heat gun and you're going to heat the surface of this EVA foam what it does is it causes it the surface to seal and it causes all of these cracks to open up once you've got that done and the cracks are opened up to the point that you are happy it doesn't exactly sound g-rated um, <laughs> you're going to have it looking pretty good. Then once you're finished, take this knife again and you're gonna go through and in some of the extra areas, you're going to do some more cuts and then you're gonna hit it with the heat gun again. And what you end up having is you have two tiers of different levels of cracks. Looks really good. This will get you your front face plate then you're going to do another one. You don't have to be as textured on this one because most of the time the backs face away. This one will take longer. This will be the back plate. And then we're going to be doing two sides. And the sides are pretty straightforward as you're just going to have the material come down and you're going to make it match up to here. Based on the fact that we're using, you know, these EVA foam mats, you might not have the distance. Let's actually find out real quick. If in a single EVA foam mat, you're going, oh, you will have the distance that you need in a mat to do the sides as well. So everything comes out of a mat. It's like I planned on it. Exactly. I'll be back after I get the rest of these all done. And we're gonna start talking about how we do the back of this and everything like that. See you in a few. Welcome back after 15,000 individual cuts with a razor blade to make wood texture out of EVA foam. So if you are here, you've done one of these, one of these, there's more to be done on this one, but we need to have the majority of it textured. And now these sides here, these need to be long enough that when you put this down on the side, you're able to roll this up and around and you don't run out of mat. And these are just about the right size by about two inches. So you wanna go do this. Now to get your width on this, you will need to take your actual base and depending on the width of your um, actual foam mats, what you wanna do is, look at that, I got my bad ruler you'll take this and then you'll add the width of two of those mats to it. And in my case, these are half inch, so it'll go to the nine inches. So these are actually nine inch cut mats. Look at that, how beautiful. A little bit off, it shrinks a bit when you heat gun it. So does that sound like a good excuse? Yeah, it should be close enough to nine inches, regardless. It's nine inches, it does not have to be perfect because when all this goes on to here, we're gonna be building corner trim that covers that edge. So it just needs to be as close as possible to make life that little bit easier. Now, right away, we're going to go and paint these brown to get a base coat on them. And once the base coat is done, I'll be back and we'll start talking about how we assemble this. But you need a base coat on these because the next steps, you won't be able to paint them after see you after these are painted now at this stage everything should be painted like this we just need a base coat because we're going to be doing some work with the plastic here and the back this is this is called Sam Hain or Simon thinking ahead but not thinking ahead and screwing up so it happens to us all I had gone through and I had this box and what I was going to do is I was going to make this a cutout so this could be removed to insert the speaker for the actual radio Except I cut it an angle from the back. What a screw up that was. I had to re-glue re this in and change my plan. If you do this, you can do this. Just make sure you angle it from this side, not the other side. Good gosh. We all make mistakes. Now, we're going to be moving on to what we're going to do with the radio here itself and the lighting in it. Now, this is just your run-of-the-mill uh, kaleidoscope bulb. This one's white. You can use different colors. I'm going to suggest white because we're going to be doing some painting on the plastic to make this all work together. So we're just going to get this out of the way. Now, the plastic here, this is going to be up to you. If you don't want to use plastic, you can always use this foam here. You can see I thought about doing it here. It's already on the template. And how to do that is you pretty much just lie this down onto your material, like blah and you draw your line out on the inside edge here. That way you've got your exact size. Whatever material you want to use for this, you can. 
plexi foam foam might not be as good this time because of how the color works on it and if that's all you have that will work completely fine as well now this this is a this is a pretty unique piece of plastic and you will see that how it's reacting when you look through it this is a friends a fresnel lens from an old tv whenever i see these things up at my local dump i'll go in there and i'll salvage out this piece of plastic it takes about five minutes of uh ape-like uh stature to go rip it out but this stuff is wild and it's so useful because you can see that at a certain distance it becomes completely opaque we cut this out to shape and this is going to be our diffusion lens for the light and you can see the effect that it has immediately on that light in behind a you can't see it and b it adds all sorts of wild diffusion i love this stuff you might not be able to get this i think you can actually order fresno lenses now but if you do have the ability or you have an old tv uh lcd or projection you should be able to find one of these lenses in it anyways so now what we're going to do is we're going to be placing this lens into place I can't do this with one hand, so you have to apologize. You're going to put this up, and you're going to mark on the front one little tiny stripe to know where this thing registers to. Then you're going to flip it over. You're going to lie it down like so, and you'll have a mark that you'll see through. And what you do is you'll just put it on. Now, if you're using a Fresnel lens, one side is going to have a definite texture. Look at that all scratches I just put onto it. It doesn't matter. And you want to have the clear side with no texture on it because that's the side we're going to be doing some painting. If you've been with me for a long time, you'll know of the video of my feigned glass up here. We're doing something similar. We're just going to use a pen. Once we have our registration mark, we're just going to go through and we're just going to draw lines along these intercepting areas. And then we're going to go paint them. So I'm going to go do that whole step. And I'll be back, and next time you see this, it'll be painted. But you'll see how that I'll draw these lines through just to give me my border on where I can't pass my paint. You'll see it when I'm done. I'll be back in a few. Now, this is all painted and installed. And you'll see that Fresnel lens does some wild things to how this egg actually looks at different angles. Regardless, for the paint, I did one set of just plain acrylic this way and then the next layer I did this way your main goal here is you don't want it to be too thick because it'll stop the light shining through now these wood oh, these wood for these foam panels I went through and I cut an angle at about 25 ish degrees just compare it to your original and just to put a strike line leave these full length because we're gonna trim them off at the bottom but once you've got this done and glued only then will you stick it onto this box. I do that to ensure that we have a really nice seam up here because this seam is exposed when we're all done. Bring it down and I used hot glue to attach it to the actual wood. Same with this, I use hot glue to hold this on. And you'll see from the back how the layering of the paint works. You do the black first, then you do your colors over top and you can see you can be a little bit sloppy because it just works out well. And then you'll need a kaleidoscope light i'm using white because that's what i want and that's how it's going to work now once we've got this out of the way we're just gonna put that there i think that's turning out pretty darn cool we're gonna be making some trim now if you do not have access to a router this will be different this specific trim is very hard to do unless you're very confident around a router and you know keeping your fingers near it because this is tight i ended up digging out my uh table router to do this and i built a little jig up which was right here and what I, this does is i would feed my foam right through here to do the routing because i don't like my fingers that close to the business end of that router bit especially with foam wood uh, a little bit more but that's that's pretty tight tolerance on any on any book especially as stuff likes to fold if you don't have access to a router and you don't want to do this, if you know how to do this, you will do this regardless. And I'm not going to explain how because you know your own machines, what you have to do. If you only have, uh, if you don't have a router, instead do the trim out of a quarter inch foam. 
this allows you just to use a Dremel to uh, sanding Dremel to just chamfer the edge. It'll work just as well. You won't have as much of a distinctive edging look on it. And that's what this is going to be all about. This is the distinctive edge that we're going to be putting on with this. Now, when this is ready to go, spray paint it in a gold base coat. And then what I did on the other two, I still have to make two more of these, is I put in a high gloss gold and then I threw some black wash to age it up a little bit. Speaking of black wash, on all of this foam, when it was done, I threw a, a spray of black wash and that's what gave it that mottled look and allowed the color to settle into the gaps. I'm still going to go through and do a bit more here, but we're kind of getting to the point where everything that we need to do is coming together. Now, once you've got this all glued down, take a knife and we're just going to cut these off. Just follow the level of the wood on the underside. Anyways, I'll be back once I get some of this trim on. We'll keep on talking about what we're doing. See you in a few. All right, a quick note on the back here. This is just landscape mesh or vent mesh, whatever the heck it is. And this is landscape fabric. You put the mesh down first and then you're going to put the fabric over top. You can skip the mesh step and just go straight to the fabric if you want. But you'll see here how this is all hot glued on and that is a hard thing to hot glue because it's so tight and it wants to pop back out. So what I normally do is, you be careful with this, is I put the hot glue down and then using a silicon baking mat, I lay it over top and I push the mat down over top of my hot glue. And what it does is it mushes it into place, holds everything beautifully without burning my hands and then the hot glue doesn't stick to the silicone mat. Anyways, I'm gonna go get this finished and I'll see you in a few. All right, we are a lot further along than I had initially intended a segment that I thought I recorded. I didn't. So I'm going to do a little bit of catch up here to bring you up to pace with where we are. Now, the last time we left off, I was talking about this trim. This is how the trim looks. And you'll do the same thing as you did with this, where you're going to cut it about 25 degrees, glue it together. And then on the front, you want to use rubber cement to glue it all the way down on the side and the front, this needs to be solid, so it sticks all together. Now, on the back, a little bit different. Okay, I got a bit of blue I gotta fix. On the back, you want to only glue this part here. And what that means is it leaves this free. So you'll push it up inside, and then what I did is using two screws, I secured this in place. Oh, and you can also see there, the mesh, how it's all done with the landscape fabric in behind. It actually looks like speaker. This is so if you need to do any work or if this bulb breaks, because you know, heaven forbid one of those things goes on me. I've had that multiple times. You can pull out these two screws and this whole back panel comes off to give you access to the internals, which you can get to access to here. It just makes it a lot easier. Once again, same thing, just cut and that paint can should not be upside down. Okay, now, once you've got those parts all done, we're going to go and we're going to do some of the extra trim. Using quarter inch EVA foam, using the template, you will find this here. And what it is, is just done exactly the same as we've done all the others. Just cut, chamfered, and then glued on with rubber cement. You'll notice that the template is longer than this is. It just means that you make this thing the full size and then you cut it down to size just in case these foam pieces don't end up exactly where you want them. Same thing on the front. You'll do the exact same thing on this piece. You'll cut it and I've only got half because the paper's not long enough. Just flip it and then cut this out. Chamfer that edge ever so gently. Spray paint it with the two types of gold. Shoot with uh, black uh, wash and done. Now here you'll get this, this is also on the template, but I'm going to be doing a gradient out so it looks a little bit more realistic. It looks pretty cool anyways. Same with this. You'll just cut out this out of foam, sand it down, paint it. This here, put tape, I use packing tape to cover it on both sides. It makes it look reflective and protects it so when you go to glue it down it doesn't have a big problem. But anyways, this will bring it to the stage that I'm bringing it to. You can change this up if you want. You want to make this into speaker openings. You can if you want to put dials on it. 
you can. I just wanted a more simple version that looks like a radio. And somebody said, why doesn't it have any tuning knobs? I said, because it's haunted. It chooses what you listen to. Anyways, I'm going to leave this be. I'm going to do a nice little presentation at the end. But I hope you enjoyed the haunted radio. I'm going to go sneak through here and try to plug it in because the final effect is fantastic. There we go. Oh, fantastic. So thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. Uh, big thanks to all my subscribers and my viewers. You guys, you know, you you may you you allow me to keep on doing stuff like this. A real big thanks to my patrons who send me a little bit each month to help me along the way. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It helps a ton in getting it out to the interwebs and the logarithms and all that stuff. Sometimes I just simply don't have the patience for it which is kind of a detriment to me. Regardless, I uh, hope you enjoyed the haunted radio. And, oh, I just realized something. How do you make this thing into a radio? Take a Bluetooth speaker and you stick it underneath. That way you can take it out, you can sync it up to a, an old phone, you can Bluetooth your music to it or whatever you want, you can play on demand. It's not worth putting a specific circuit into it. Sometimes the simplest solution is just that. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. And have a good one all. See you on the next one.